Bank of Canada held its overnight rate at 5% this morning. It is anticipating an economic growth rebound in 2024 due mainly to strong population and household spending. Also on today's program, Nadine Ahn's termination as CFO at the Royal Bank could lead to massive financial losses. March's consumer prices in the U.S. were up more than expected at 3.5% year over year. And this signals a challenge for the Federal Reserve in reducing interest rates anytime soon. Provincial regulators in Canada are scrutinizing exclusive deals between insurers and pharmacies and are seeking regulations to prioritize patient care over business interests. And Canadian residents owning iPhone 6 and 7 models are eligible for up to $150 compensation as part of a class action lawsuit settlement with Apple for software issues. Today is Wednesday, April the 10th, 2024. Let's get started with today's top stories. As was widely expected, the Bank of Canada this morning it decided to hold its target for the overnight rate at 5%. And this now continues its approach that we've seen over the last while of quantitative tightening. I want to look at some of the key points that were uh, reported this morning. From an economic perspective, Canada's economy, according to the bank, experienced a stall in growth in the latter half of last year, moving into excess supply. But there have been signs of easing labor market conditions and moderating wage pressures. Uh, on an economic growth forecast here, growth is expected to rebound in 2024, supported mostly by strong population growth and household spending recovery. Um, overall, the bank forecasts GDP growth, 1.5% in 2024, 2.2% 2 .2 in 2025, and then 1.9% in 2026. And the strength in the economy here is gradually going to absorb excess supply through 2025 and into 2026. Now, on an inflation trend here, the CPI slowed to 2.8% in February with broad-based easing in price pressures. The bank anticipates inflation to be close to 3% in the first half of this year with a decline expected in the latter half and then target inflation rate of 2% to be reached in 2025 at some point. They also talked about their global economic outlook and the global economy, according to the Bank of Canada, is expected to grow at a rate of about 3% with the U.S. economy showing resilience through strong uh, consumption and business spending. The bank has adjusted its global GDP growth uh, forecast upwards for the upcoming years. Now, from a financial conditions perspective, despite the higher bond yield since January, the bank is saying that the overall financial conditions have eased, um, helped out by narrower corporate credit spreads and a rise in equity markets. Global oil prices have also seen an increase. So the, the governing council here, it says that it is going to continue to monitor core inflation, the balance between demand and supply, inflation expectations, wage growth and corporate pricing behavior and it reaffirmed its commitment to restoring price stability for Canadians. The next updates, a little while here, a little bit of a wait. The next overnight rate target will be announced on June the 5th, 2024. And a comprehensive economic and inflation outlook, including risks to the projection, will be published in the Monetary Policy Report, which is due out on July 24th, 2024. The firing of Nadine Ahn, who was the former now CFO at Royal Bank, this has the potential for massive financial losses for her. I reported here on Monday that an internal investigation at the bank revealed that she was involved in an undisclosed close personal relationship with another employee, and that relationship uh, resulted in preferential treatment, including promotions, compensation uh, increases for that employee. So as a result, both of these employees were terminated. Now, here's how the incident might affect her financially. When we look at the reason for termination, RBC terminated on for contravening the company's code of conduct by engaging in an undisclosed personal relationship with a colleague that led to a perceived preferential treatment. Now, there's a difference here between with cause and without cause. And while RBC didn't explicitly state that on was terminated with cause, the uh, implications of her actions suggest she could lose entitlements, which are typically preserved for a without cause uh, termination scenario. For example, being terminated with cause, that would mean that she would stand to lose significant compensation, including uh, no cash severance, no bonuses, and all unvested stock options and performance shares. If her termination were considered without cause, she would have been eligible for a cash severance estimated at $2.56 million with awards continuing to invest. 
Now, as of her termination, On had uninvested performance deferred share units worth approximately $4.53 million at RBC's last closing price, stock options with the potential profits exceeding a million dollars. And most of these are now at risk of forfeiture because of the circumstances here. Probably the worst part of this story for On, despite everything going on, her termination stops what looked like a very lucrative career path she was on and she was even being viewed as a possible successor to CEO Dave McKay. There is some big news coming out next week at Blossom Social. If you're a user, you do want to stay tuned for sure. I can't go into all of the details right now, but I can assure you that if you love the app, you're going to love the news that's coming out as well. Now, just a few weeks ago, I mentioned that Blossom had passed the 100,000 member level. That's now old news. The number is now 120,000 and continuing to grow. If you are already on the platform, like I say, stay tuned. If you're not a Blossom user yet, go ahead, download the app, have a look at what all of the excitement is about. Um, obviously, I'm on the platform. If you're interested in knowing what investments I'm holding right now, what I'm buying, what I'm selling, some of the thoughts behind those, you can go ahead and look me up. My username there is Mark B, so M-A-R-C-B. You can scan the QR code right here on this screen or you can click the link in the description of this video. U.S. inflation numbers were reported this morning, and in March, the consumer prices were up 3.5% year over year. And once again, that came in much worse than what the consensus and expectations were. And the key point here, this is going to make it very hard for the Federal Reserve to start cutting interest rates anytime soon. Uh, Seema Shaw, she's the chief global strategist at Principal Asset Management, she notes... This marks the third consecutive strong reading and means that the stalled disinflationary narrative can no longer be called a blip. In fact, even if inflation were to cool next month to a more comfortable reading, there is likely sufficient caution within the Fed now to mean that a July cut may also be a stretch, by which point the U.S. election will begin to intrude with Fed decision making. When we look at the details of this morning's announcement, start here with energy prices and the prices in, in the energy sector climbed by 1.1%. And this marks a slowdown from February's 2.3%, but it still contributed notably to the inflation increase. Um, shelter costs, always important. They account for about one third of CPI's weighting. They rose by 0.4% for the month, and they had a significant 5.7% of year over year. And this rise contradicts with the Fed's uh, predictions of decreasing shelter-related costs as part of the overall inflation cooling process. Uh, food prices, not bad. The overall food prices increased modestly by 0.1% for the month, so that wasn't uh, too bad there. Um, used vehicle prices, in contrast to a lot of the other categories, prices for used vehicles actually fell by 1.1%, and that sort of offers a distinction from the broader inflationary trend overall. So you have to look at how this report will affect Jerome Powell and his, his team there at the Fed. Liz Ann Saunders, she is the chief investment strategist at Charles Schwab. And she says, there's not much you can point to that is going to result in a shift away from the hawkish bent from Fed officials. June to me is definitely off the table. Now, as of this morning, the CME FedWatch tool, it has the odds of a 25 basis point rate cut in June at only 20.5%. Insurance regulators across Canada are getting more and more concerned about exclusive deals between insurers and pharmacies, which are known as preferred pharmacy networks or PPNs. And this comes after Ontario has initiated a move for stricter regulations. The deals, particularly now highlighted by what has now been cancelled, the arrangement between Manulife Financial and Shoppers Drug Mart that was um, out, we talked about it just uh, a month or so ago. These have sparked the debate over the prioritization of business interests over patient care. When this is looked at from a regulatory concern perspective, there are several provinces that are exploring now ways to restrict or regulate these PPNs following Ontario's lead. They cite the need to preserve patients' choice and to prevent business interests from overshadowing patient care. Uh, these are growing. PPNs have become more prevalent. Uh, they've been drawing scrutiny for limiting, especially chronically ill patients, to purchasing certain medications exclusively from specified pharmacies. So this raises questions about the patient's autonomy and, of course, their access to care, which is so important here. Now, other provinces, including Alberta, Manitoba, Newfoundland and Labrador, and Nova Scotia, they've also expressed concerns about PPNs, and some of them are suggesting that the Federal uh, Competition Bureau should investigate. So the growing backlash against this type of arrangement, it's reflecting a broader concern about the balance uh, between optimizing healthcare delivery and maintaining a competitive market that respects patients' uh, choice. 
As provinces are considering their regulatory responses here, the conversation just really underscores the tension between healthcare as a service and its commercial aspects in Canada's mixed public-private healthcare system. Canadian residents who have owned iPhone 6 and 7 models are now eligible to submit a claim as part of a class action lawsuit settlement with uh, Apple. The settlement, which was approved by BC Supreme Court, it offers compensations for up to 150 bucks for those who are affected by certain uh, software issues. So let's have a look at some of the key points of the settlement. The BC Supreme Court, um, it has approved the class action lawsuit for up to $14.4 million for eligible iPhone 6 and 7 users in Canada. Now this excludes Quebec residents. Quebec residents are subject to a separate class action lawsuit. To be eligible, and individuals must have owned a, an iPhone 6, 6 Plus, 6S, 6S Plus, um, or SE, a 7 or 7 Plus running iOS 10.2.1 or later before December 21st, 2017. And they must have been residents of Canada uh, as of June 15th, 2023. Claims have to be submitted by September the 2nd and they have to use a specific online form. So claimants are required here to provide details uh, such as your name, your address, your phone number, email, and the 12 digit alphanumeric uh, serial number of the device that they were uh, looking for compensation for. The compensation details, eligible claimants can receive between $17.50 and 150 bucks, depending on the total number of claims that are submitted overall. Uh, payment options, they include email money transfer or mailed check, although the exact payment date wasn't specified at this time. Now, Apple stands, while they are agreeing to the settlement, they are denying any wrongdoing, any fault, or any liability related to the allegations. Again, big news coming over at Blossom Social next week. Stay tuned for that. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Pulse newsletter. That goes out every weekend. I will put a link in this video's description. You can join there. I'm here every Monday, every Wednesday. You might also consider subscribing to this channel. As always, thanks for watching the video. See you in the next video.